Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Vita Kurdomsky. I'm the CTO of Engine. Uh, we've been around for about 10 years, and uh, we've been providing services for gamers like uh, social network tools and, and things like that, and, and virtual item kind of before blockchain kind of virtual items for Minecraft and, and tools like that. So uh, today, uh, I'm actually going to talk about a few things. Uh, I was supposed to do a demo, but we weren't able to get my laptop uh, hooked up. But I have a few interesting topics to talk about. So first, I'm going to talk about new kinds of gameplay that are possible with blockchain, sort of inspire game developers to see what they can do. Uh, then I'll touch on the ERC-1155 token standard, of which I'm uh, the author and one of the co-authors. And then I'll show, show you guys a few kinds of block blockchain games coming in the future. So uh, probably everybody's familiar with sort of true ownership of virtual items. Uh, you can represent items, characters, skins, and currency, and all those kind of things in games uh, when you tokenize items. Uh, the way that, that works, you know, you have these tokens in your wallet, and the tokens can represent uh, an item inside the game. So for example, if you have the token that represents a spell book, you might have that spell book in the game. If you have a token that represents the hammer, you might have the hammer. And if you have the token that represents the epic helmet, you'll have the epic helmet in the game. And the way this usually works is the game will look at if you have the token, yes, then display the item. So pretty simple. Uh, I'll touch that we have a wallet, the engine wallet, that we're we've released uh, early this year that actually we're trying to make it the sort of inventory that people have all their items of. So it supports ERC-1155 items, ERC-721, and ERC-20, and we want to support all game items in this wallet so players can sort of have their, you know, Pokedex or whatever in, in their hands. Uh, another cool thing you can do now uh, is a gaming multiverse. So since blockchains are completely transparent and open, many games can recognize that players have an item. So you can have multiverse game one, two, three, and four, all seeing that the player has this hammer token. And if they have the hammer token, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same game asset in each game. So if we look at this example, uh, the first representation is our sort of generic multiverse item that we made on engine. Uh, we, we tried to sort of kickstart this for game developers, kind of jumpstart it by making a few generic items, we made a hammer, a sword, and you know, a, a big character and things like that. And we asked game developers, what can you do with this? Let's put this in your game, you know, try to collaborate and, and see what you can do with items. So uh, the second picture that you see there is Age of Rust. It's a really cool sci-fi. Uh, 3D game, and they they turn the hammer into this epic sci-fi hammer that that has lightning coming out of it and all sorts of stuff. And second game is uh, Crypto Fights, and they have that that sort of battle hammer. And then you have this pixelated hammer from the game Forest Knight. So they all use the asset in, in different ways, but it's still when the player owns it, they can pop into each game, and they see the asset like that. They see it on their character. It's pretty cool. And here's another example. If you have the sword token. It'll look like, you know, the second picture there is Age of Rust again, and then the, the third one is Nine Lives Arena, a really cool combat, uh, combat game. And then there's Forest Knight again with the, with the sword. So uh, next thing, you, you, blockchain stores all the history of everything that happened. So deep history and metadata of your items and characters is a huge, powerful tool. Uh, if, if the item is owned by Bob, then it gets transferred to Alice. Then you can say this was the sword of Bob the Troll Slayer. And you can do all sorts of history and metadata. If the sword was damaged, if it was repaired or enchanted, if it was sold, you can track that. You can see what happened in your game. And if you have the right API, the right tools, you can actually build a history and, and use that in the game. So you can make complex storyline generators, sort of if you remember some games like Baldur's Gate or, or other um, like Oblivion or Elder Scrolls games, they made complex storylines about what happened with your items. Now you can start doing that across games and you can start doing that very deeply with, with the full history of every single item. And you can do things like adjust the game difficulty based on uh, what, what players have done with their items. Pretty cool stuff. Another big thing is collaborative gaming. So 
uh, a game developer actually, I had a conversation with a game developer a few days ago, and they had a really cool idea. They want to make a kind of war, war robots, uh, battle bots kind of, kind of game. And every token in the game is going to be uh, things like servo motors, wheels, uh, you know, hydraulic pieces, and players can actually put them together like a real robot, and multiple, multiple players can actually build the robot out of the different tokens that they own. One, one person can own different pieces that he's put together, uh, another place, player can own different pieces. They can build this robot, then they can battle it, or they can, they can put it out into quests around the world. And if that robot wins things, then the players that put it together will get a share of the, the spoils of the battle. It's really cool. Like that's amazing what you can do with, with blockchain. Um, you can let you can lend items to other players inside games. That's pretty cool. Um, you can create tokens. You can forge things. And the last one here, dog tags. Like in FPS games, uh, players could even have their own tokens that they mint to treat as dog tags and have their own sort of kill tracking system in, in games. And you can do things like mining. Um, is basically awarding tokens to players for doing certain things in the game. So whether they're playing the game or, or actually mining items in the game, they can receive tokens for doing that. Geolocated tokens is really cool. It's something I really want to see. Um, you know how popular Pokemon Go was. Imagine you had tokens located in the real world uh, with coordinates in them. And you go to a real space in the real world, and that, that token turns out to be some epic turret that you have to team up with your friends and fight. And when you kill it, it spills out a bunch of other tokens, or it's, it's, you can salvage it, salvage the remains of it. I think that's really cool and powerful, and people can start playing with that. And here's a weird one. Uh, with blockchain, blockchain is the, the, only, uh, the only thing, the only kind of structure that a non, like a non-human entity can actually own. So uh, if you had a, an AI that completely locked out all human access, and I've been actually playing with a little script where it generates its own private keys, it locks the person out of the server, and it can own cryptocurrency, it has its own wallet. You can, you can build an AI that actually has its own blockchain, and then it can even hire players or hire people to do its bidding and uh, have its own uh, interesting, weird uh, Skynet type of thing building there. <laughs> okay, so second part now. I want to talk about token standards for gaming. So as I said, I'm the uh, original author of the 1155 standard, and uh, we made that for some specific reasons. So in the beginning, there was ERC-20. This is made for fungible tokens, things like currency, uh, rice, water, money, things like that. that things that are fungible and, and every unit is the same. That's good for those kind of things, but for gaming, that wasn't enough, and ERC721 was released, and the biggest example of that was CryptoKitties. Every unit of an ERC721 token contract is a unique unit with a unique ID, and that can have its own unique properties. But there are some limitations in both of these standards. There's a lot of items in games. So World of Warcraft has over 100,000 types of items, and each of those items can have many thousands of copies or you know, hundreds of thousands of copies. RuneScape has 35,000. Know, there's, there's a lot of items. And with these two token standards, you have to deploy a separate co smart contract to the blockchain for every item type you make. Like, that is very redundant. Uh, why would you need to deploy the exact same token contract with a slight change for every type of token? That's absolutely uh, unmanageable, and it's not going to work for, for mainstream kinds of games that use tons of items. So we decided to make ERC-1155. Uh, we started working on it really early this year, uh, actually last year, and it has uh, some properties that make it uh, very suitable for game items. All the items are stored on a single smart contract. So you make one contract and you sort of define the rules, the, the, the universe you want those items to live in. And then you can mint all the items. Uh, you can mint all, all your game items in that sort of rule set. And you can, uh, to mint an item, you just have to spend a small amount of Ethereum gas. 
and you because you don't have to deploy all this data onto the, the blockchain anymore. It could just be a change of name, or it could be a change of uh, some settings. In our system, we, we let people do things like lock tokens to accounts, create like a cursed or bound token. You can have trading fees if you want. Uh, you could have a lot of different parameters. And you just set those. It just costs you know maybe 100,000 gas instead of 2 million gas to deploy a new token. And now it lets you do really cool things, because with ERC-20, you have to, to look, for example, with trading, you have to do an approve multiple times. You have to do all these different approves on every single token you want to trade. And because every ERC-20 contract has its own permission system. Uh, with ERC-1155, you can do a uh, big bulk trade. You can even do uh, 100 items traded for 100 different kinds of items with any amount of quantities of you want. With, with one or two operations. It's, it's very quick and very uh, efficient. And you can do multi-transfers, uh, same sort of thing. You can say, I want to trade 150 different items. You send that batch to the contract, and it does that one trade atomically. And we've, uh, the, the small uh, improvement we made, uh, ERC-20's approve function actually had a bit of a flaw in it. So we fixed that, and now there's no front running possible. Uh, every ERC-20 contract now has to have a hack placed in it. Uh, we fixed that with this current value change to approve. And now with ERC-1155, it's really cool because artists and game designers can actually make items too. You can have a, a really easy web interface. We've built uh, interfaces into our plugins, like in Unity Editor. We have a really nice uh, graphical user interface where any game designer can go in, punch in the details, the settings they want for their tokens. They hit Create. They hit how many they want minted. Boom, it's done. Uh, if you want to see that, I, uh, you can find me in the conference, and I'll show it to you on my laptop. It's, it's really easy to use. Uh, here's a little example of uh, one of the example games we're going to ship. Uh, we just figured when we're going to release a Unity plugin, uh, it's really cool for someone to just open up an example game, play around. So this is a kind of fish tank. Uh, you have these amoebas. Uh, each amoeba is unique, and it has its own uh, colors that change, eyes, mouths, and body shapes that change. You can have hundreds of thousands of different combinations. And there's these green algae floating around. And uh, what we're adding in is you, you can send your, your amoebas out to other people's fish tanks, and then they can eat those people's algae and come back. So if you make a really cool amoeba that, that's, that's dangerous, it can go destroy other people's tanks. It's pretty fun. And here's a, a little screenshot of uh, another thing you can do with, with uh, blockchain items. You can have a website that actually reads and, and shows you blockchain items. So instead of every item being locked into the walled garden of the game itself, now they can, you can make a website, you can show these items off, you can show 3D models and have this, this whole sort of uh, item database on, on the web. So this is Nginx. We're going to support ERC721, ERC1155, and ERC20, all the, token, the main token standards. And uh, you can go in and see rich metadata of every item. So if you want to look at 1155, check it out on GitHub. We've went through about five revisions so far. We're going to probably going to do one or two more, depending on feedback. But it's getting very close to final. Um, we've trimmed it down recently. And uh, we're going to try to push towards final status. So finally, blockchain games of the future. We're used to uh, web-based, a lot of web-based uh, blockchain games, and that's normal. It's, it's the start. It's very easy to make. But I want to show you what kind of games can come out. We've, we've announced 10 games already at Engine, 10 game developers working with us to make their new games. And we have actually hundreds applying to, to use, the standard, to use our, our platform. So this first one is Nine Lives Arena. It looks freaking amazing. It's full 3D. It's a game where you have permadeath. So you get, when you buy the game, you get nine lives. And every time you die, you lose a life. And uh, yeah, it looks amazing. It looks, looks like a AAA game. And here's the ways they're using blockchain. They're tokenizing their ep the items, their weapons, and their armor. Things like crafting blueprints can be tokenized. The belt on your character, when you die, it's lost after your permadeath. So that you lose that, that token, that belt. Your characters are, are tokens. Um, and then you have this cool idea, Oogies. They're like virtual Tamagotchis, where you can uh, 
you can see them on your mobile device when you're at work, and you can tell them to do things like build weapons for you uh, while you're offline. And those are tokenized too, and they have their own unique characteristics to them. And then they're also using uh, multiverse items from other games, so it's pretty cool to see that collaboration. This is a really, a really cool game, Age of Rust. They're a 3D sci-fi game, and they, they look incredible. They're post-apocalyptic, and uh, you should really check out their website. It's amazing. And they're also collaborating with Neon District, which I believe are at the conference today, uh, today as well. So they're using uh, the, the blockchain for authenticated access to different areas of the game. Uh, if certain blocks happen in the, on the blockchain, various gates may open, things like that. Uh, they're using uh, cooldowns, how many blocks must pass before different things happen, uh, puzzle rewards. They're also doing the multiverse, and there's puzzles that are based on blockchain data because they have uh, Coin Artist, which did a lot of the famous uh, blo blockchain puzzles. Actually, that was near on District. But anyways, there's, there's, uh, they're doing puzzles based on blockchain data, which is really cool. And there's uh, one more that was just recently announced. Um, this is a skydiving sort of wingsuit game. It's called uh, Beyond the Sky. And uh, it, it looks really cool. You get to pick up tokens while you're flying through the air, use them for power-ups. And uh, we're really excited for this one as well. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you want to catch me anywhere at the conference, I can show you some of our tools we're making at Engine. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>